Hello YouTube, welcome to part two of Tubular Lockpicks here on Locked Out. Alright, part two, we're going to be dealing with the Huck Pick. Now, there were, there, there, there were a lot of reasons why I ordered this pick first. Uh, the first reason is that it comes with three of these picks in, in three different sizes and I wasn't absolutely 100% certain which sizes I was going to need. It turns out we really only need one for most stuff, but I'm going to give you a nice, good close-up shot of this just so uh, you can familiarize yourself a little bit with what we're dealing with. I've made some modifications to this pick that I'm not going to unmake um, just for the purpose of, of showing off all show you by example different different stuff but uh, here's generally what we're working with these little silicone things right here are um, are gaskets or uh, uh, not gaskets but um, um, damn it I can't think of the word right now but oh well that happens to me all the time these little rubber things I'm sure you know what they are I'm sure I'll know what they are after I'm done filming but uh, these little rubber things are all that is giving us tension to stop these sliding back and forth. And this is a really low amount of effort that I'm putting on here to cause this this pin that's sliding. I mean, I I'm probably putting maybe maybe three ounces of pressure on this. I feel like this would move three ounces. But that's about it. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of pressure. And then of course on the on the opposite pin, this is much more pressure. It's not a whole lot, but it's much more. It's probably about five pounds worth, um, which is actually pretty crucial later on. And I'll uh, I'll show you better why it's so crucial. Uh, but like I said, this is just familiarizing it, familiarizing you with the way it's built um, and I'll, I'll break into all the different little parts here let me pull my focus back out I still need a focus puller um, anyway you, you order the thing from uh, well there's a few different places but Alibaba is a you know that's the best place to go to as far as I can tell um, you order these uh, from from China that's where virtually all of these come from is China and uh, I've got my theory that there were two different design teams involved in in the design of this of this of this device here and I think that the teams were split up according to who's gonna who's gonna design the tension part of this tool and who's gonna design the actual picks and you know, something I've figured out from from uh, lock lock manipulation is essentially you always have two parts to any lock picking tool, and it's the tension the tension that's trying to spin the lock even though it's still locked, and then the uh, individual the actual pick. And I've heard it said before, and I think I have to agree that probably about 70% of picking is actually the tension that you put on whatever lock you're trying to, to manipulate. It's not so much about the pick. I mean, the pick is important. Without the pick, none of it would work. Uh, but when it comes to actual skill and using experience to figure out how to manipulate a lock, tension is usually the 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 finer uh, the finer part of that art um, you gotta have the right tension and this tool is no different and I do believe that there were two separate design teams in charge of this the competent design team was responsible for you know the central shaft here I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this apart so that you can see how it goes together and like I said this comes with all of the tools that you need to take it down to the very last little gasket. I'm going to 
I'm going to do that right now, right in front of you, so you can see how this works. This is a set screw, just a hex set screw, and this is a solid piece of milled aluminum. Uh, it's got a little washer to kind of help things set. This ring here is actually magnetized, <laughs> uh, which comes in handy. It does, because then it'll stay... You know this this thing when it's all put together when the shaft is in here this washer is is fitted inside this aluminum and of course aluminum doesn't care about magnets too much but the steel does so when all this is put together and that washer is forced up in between in between that little land right there and this one here when this is on here it can spin and it can, or it can slide, and it can stick up uh, into the handle, even though the handle is made out of aluminum. It, it uses this little steel washer to uh, to stick to. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to pull all these out. And I'm not going to pull them all the way out, because I want to show you something about them. Well, I guess I am going to pull that one all the way out, so I guess I can show you right now. This is going to be this is going to turn out later on to be a real crucial difference so I want to go out of my way to show you exactly what I'm talking about with it which means we got to get all the way up here. We got to really get up here. Okay. This is really close focus. I'm about to hit the camera lens with this. But uh anyway, I want to show you how this is bent on the end because it is. It's bent and it's actually been this is not just a flat piece of metal. This has been curved and bent on the end which is uh, a really nice little touch. It comes in handy. It makes this better uh, it, it makes this little thing right here better than say a bobby pin. <laughs> Uh, this is way better than a bobby pin, even though it's almost exactly the same dimensions. You know, except for this little this little curve here at the end, this is almost exactly the same dimensions. It's the same thickness, it's the same width, I mean, almost nothing, it's exactly. Uh, anyway, uh, but back to why I think this was designed by two separate teams. I don't even know why this one's not moving. Cheap piece of... There we go. All right, out you go, out you go, oops, out you go, out you go, nope, not out you go, well, and grab our other little wrench here, because like I said, these puck picks came with all the tools that you need in order to do this properly, so, uh, I swore I'd be a little bit more coordinated than, than Bosnian Bill there, and wouldn't be dropping my tools all over the place, but you see how well that's turning out. I think it's just because of the maybe the angles I'm having to do this with. But uh anyhow. Pick this one out of here. That, that, and that. Okay, and there's seven of those. This is the ring. Now I'm gonna show you a nice little close up of this little uh, tension ring because this is this is going to be important later on too so uh, anyway there's a little set screw in the ring which goes all the way through and you know prevents the ring from moving when the ring is when that little set screw is locked in to this little slot on the shaft that set screw goes right there where that flat piece is landed out okay now, focus, there we go, okay, <sighs> so, got that for the little ring, and then we've got pretty much the most annoying part of this whole ordeal <laughs> with these, is these damn rubber bands. Now, these rubber bands really, I mean, these rubber bands piss me off for all sorts of reasons but mainly they just piss me off because it's it smacks of terrible quality I mean 
absolutely terrible. They went to the bother of, and when I get all this crap off here, I'm going to show you just how well built each individual component of this is. And I'm not going to take these two ones here in the center out because that's all they are. They're just slightly different versions of these. They're squared off and they're a little bit larger, but aside from that, there's really no difference. Um, there's a set screw in here that you can use to remove this pin and that's a really 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 good thing too it turns out uh, but we'll get into exactly why that's a good thing here in a little bit um, I'm going to show you this pin just because I've modified it from its original form I'm going to show you the back side to show you what the original pin cross section looked like uh, let's see here Oh, hey, cool, okay. Here's the round, unmodified end of this pin. This is how it comes out of the factory looking. Um, this wasn't going to work for me, and I'll show you a little bit why here in, here in a bit. But here's the other end of this pin, after I've modified it. Which means I took an angle grinder and just kind of, you know, shaved it down a little bit. So that this end of the pin is what's facing into the lock when it's being used. And the round end is the one that's still inside here. And this thing goes into that little hole just like this and put it down towards the bottom and drop it in there. Okay. And that's what it looks like when it's installed. And of course, you know, I, I turn, I'll invert the pick a little bit so that it's facing, so it's a lot closer to the end. When I tighten, okay, and then we just stick this in here. And we tighten that key. And then this is, uh, a lot closer to the end now which is right where it needs to be and it needs to be just a little bit shaved off and like I said I'll show you why but let me pull the focus back out here there we go like I said I need a focus puller guys so you know, anyone wants to be a focus puller anybody <laughs> um, Anyhow, this is pretty much taken down to the bones. I, I, I put this thing back in because I well, I don't want to lose it. And it's a small part. But this is basically the component, the, the main component of what you're working with. All right, and I'll show you how well this fits in here. Okay, got the little arrow on the top, so that's the top. It lines up with the notch. So we just stick it in there. And now we've got a little bit of tension. We can rotate the core. And if this is going in all the way, like it should, all of those little notches should disappear. And it should go right up to the tip of that arrow. If it's going in all the way. And this is why I had to shave the center pin. Because if I didn't shave the center pin, it's not quite small enough to fit inside here. So it's going to jam up, and it's only going to go in about this far. And as you can see, that's nowhere near far enough. So that's why I had to do that with the pin. So now I can actually put it into the lock and get some tension. All right. Um, let's see here. This has a lot of good things about it. Um, I love how well made, how well measured, how precisely machined this particular piece is. I like the fact that there is a screw here that enables you to remove this center pin and this kit actually comes with uh, a spare center pin um, everything pretty much is removable uh, the only like I said the only real major gaffe is this damn stupid little tension setup they've got here with the little rubber bands and this stuff here and because you know you can tell the way they do the tension 
is when when these are stretched across here the way this device provides tension is by constricting this area and you see there's a little gap in there and by pressing right here you you vary the tension on this but that's really 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 dumb and there's a couple of reasons for that first of all rubber does not give consistent tension at all this this is not even rubber I think this is silicon because it's it's clear and and whatnot so this isn't even actually rubber but this kind of material it doesn't really matter what it's actually made out of it stretches and it gives a uniform uh, uh, squeeze pressure on the inside here whatever this thing is is putting pressure on is going to be uniform all the way around all right but only for the moment the pressure that these can provide will decrease over time it's unavoidable and they'll stiffen and they'll crack and they'll discolor and they'll be all kinds of problems but even when they're brand new the amount of tension provided by these one minute versus the next is so greatly varied that you cannot get consistent results uh, uh, using this tool as it's as it comes to you as it's shipped this thing is virtually useless I never picked this lock with these tools ever and they were essentially they weren't they weren't too much more use than this right here you know the crappy one that I that I made based on pictures of, 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 of all this kind of stuff um, these are a really crappy investment if you think that you're gonna buy these and this is all you need to buy in order to to uh, 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 compromise your uh, ace lock because this will never ever work and there's a couple of good reasons number one this is this is an ace too so they made some modifications to it um, you can tell that the barrels pretty deep so there's there's lots of room for springs in here which means high spring pressure um, the body is is a this this whole part right here um, is one solid piece of steel um, it's not it's it's not going anywhere this is actually pretty damn heavy it's it's probably about three or four ounces um, if you put this inside of a say a sock and swung it around and hit someone in the head with it, you'd kill them easy this thing is not um, this is not no punk right here uh, anyway the spring pressure varies between one pin and the next in this lock. If you if you try to use the same pressure on all these sliding pins on every single one of these pins in here, you will fail because each one of these pins alternates the spring pressure. This one will be heavy, this one will be light, this one will be heavy, this one will be light, etc., etc. All right, so using this right here is never going to work on this you better use this on some bitch made piece of crap you know like a, a, a lock that you know from top to bottom is only about that tall you know so you know there's hardly any spring pressure maybe none at all um, there are some ace type locks uh, ESD locks and etc that have purposely very light um, very light spring pressure and they're doing that on purpose just to fool this kind of, of thing right here because even with these this amount of pressure is actually going to be too much uh, for those kinds of locks um, and we'll discuss those more towards the end of all these segments and stuff but basically I just wanted to break this lock down into pieces for you and I wanted to show you um, the differences in the sizes because the reason they send you three of these is because they're three different sizes and it might not be too easy to tell that they're different sizes at least not from here but they are um, this is actually the medium one and this is the small one but now they're arranged in size right now from right to left uh, the one on the very right is the smallest one the one on the very left is the largest one and the one in between is the midsize 
and you can see that I've already uh, uh, had to kind of cannibalize this one here and take its pin because uh, I screwed up the first pin and the spare so I had to take this pin from here and, and put it in there but anyway that's all that's all not really here or there <laughs> I'll put these back in here and anyway these are all the basic parts that you're looking at um, there were some really great high quality aspects of this like I said this is this is really well done and it's got a screw in here so you can actually change the pin uh, you can actually uh, uh, change every single thing that's that's liable to wear out in this in this pick. You can change just about all of it, uh, which comes in really handy. Um, the handle, I don't know if they had to absolutely make that to where it could come off, but it's really well made. All this stuff, all these components themselves are really well made, which is why I think two teams of people went went to bed on this on this lock here be and I think those two teams actually didn't go to bed I think those two teams were probably on the other side of the world from each other and I think they spoke maybe twice because you know the the people in charge of making this thing they they really went out of their way to make it well including putting the little the little nib here at the end to make these better than just a a, a bobby pin the fact that they really precision machined all this stuff here uh, this is really well made it's really nice and thick in here um, or at least as thick as it can be it fits snugly in the lock it's a good snug fit you don't get a lot of rattling around just from the looseness of the tool itself um, all the individual components are really well made but when it comes to the team that was in charge of, of determining how the the tension was actually going to be applied to the lock how the the resistance was actually going to go on these on these picks here um, uh, they just totally dropped the ball on, on that because these like I said these right here are not consistent tension you can't adjust them except by putting more on there or taking one or two of them off that's pretty much the only way you can do it um, that 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 really that really just sunk this product because this product could have been really really good this product actually is made better than the southern pick that I'm gonna do next and I'll show you um, and I'll, I'll take the southern down too uh, and and show you all of its neat little secrets and and some of the stuff I had to do to it but anyway that's this pick these are Huck picks and uh, I would suggest that if you're going to be serious about lock manipulation, you're going to be serious about these locks, you do, you should pick up this set because it will come in handy later. But if you've only got like 50 bucks and you can't really afford a Southern pick, uh, don't get this. If, if you can only afford one thing, do not get this. You'll be better off saving up for a Southern and then just making some modifications later on don't get this unless you've got an extra 30 or 40 bucks to burn and and you're the patient type you can wait for a month to get this get for this to get to you from China um, but if you can wait and you can afford it I would definitely recommend getting this and the southern pick and I'll show you why but uh, anyway that's Huck pick detail thanks for tuning in